Holy f**k. Here, Francis, here's arrival. A 24-year-old woman tragically died when her Tesla burst into flames after a crash last week in Miami. And last year, three kids died in the Cybertruck crash. Now, a new lawsuit has been filed, and some of the details have huge implications. You found Stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. The first incident happened on October 1st, 2025 in Miami. What's frustrating about this one is that, realistically, it should have been a pretty minor crash. The vehicle hit a pole, but it wasn't the kind of impact that should have been instantly fatal. What made it deadly wasn't the collision itself, it was what happened afterwards. Police say a Tesla was cut off by another vehicle, veered off the road, and struck a utility pole. The driver was trapped inside when the car caught fire. Officers arrived quickly and tried everything, fire extinguishers, breaking out the windows, even attempting to reach her through the flames, but she never made it out. From what I've seen of the damage and the fire behavior in the videos, this looks less like a high voltage battery fire and more like the low voltage battery failure, specifically the 12 volt system. In a lot of the newer Teslas, that small 12 volt battery is mounted up near the firewall. Those smaller batteries can store about the same level of energy as many e-bikes. Unfortunately, when the front end of that car crumbles, it gets in a crash, the battery can be crushed, causing thermal runaway almost instantly. And when that happens, the results can be brutal. That 12 volt system doesn't just run the lights and accessories. It also powers the locks, the windows, and the release buttons for the doors. So that 12 volt battery fails or burns, those systems go dead, the electronic door buttons stop working altogether, and you have to use the hidden mechanical release instead. I'll be honest, I don't like covering stories like this. They're pretty awful. Somebody lost their life, and there's nothing sensational about it. And the truth is, this kind of thing happens more often than I report on. But it's important people understand that these incidents do happen, and that they're not always the dramatic battery explosions you see online. Sometimes it's something small, a simple design decision, or that placement of one component that ends up costing somebody their life. The problem is, many drivers either don't know the manual release exists, or in a crash, they're too disoriented or injured to find it. If the cabin's filling up with smoke, seconds matter, and you don't have time to look up how to open that door. But when a vehicle owner uses that button, day in, day out, that's what they're going to go for. There's also another issue. When that low voltage battery fails, it can release a large amount of carbon monoxide and other toxic gases. Those fumes can make their way right into the cabin. And to give you some context, a recent study on e-bike battery failures indoors found that carbon monoxide levels spiked almost immediately. It actually maxed out their meters at 50,000 parts per million. For comparison, the CO alarm in your house, carbon monoxide, it sounds right around 30 parts per million and instant death occurs nearly 12,000 parts per million. That kind of exposure can knock somebody out in seconds, and we're talking 50,000 parts per million. That means by the time officers had arrived, they were trying to get her out, she may have already succumbed before the flames even reached her. When you watch the footage of the officers trying to put out the fire with handheld extinguishers, it's clear this doesn't appear to be a fire involving the vehicle's high voltage battery. There's no venting, there's no jet like flames. It looks like just front end damage and a front end compartment fire, right where you'd find that 12 volt battery. Fire crews were able to knock down the flames quickly, and again, even after the flames went out, it didn't appear that the high voltage battery was on fire at all. And unfortunately, this isn't the only case where someone became trapped in a burning Tesla. Just last year, three young people died in a cyber truck crash under fairly similar circumstances, and now their families are suing. This happened last November in Piedmont, California, a crash I covered when it first happened. The vehicle struck a tree, it caught fire, trapping three of the four people inside. Only one passenger managed to escape. The others, they didn't make it. Now their families are suing Tesla, and they're saying this wasn't just a crash, it was a design failure that turned a survivable accident into a death trap. Investigators say the Cybertruck was traveling at a high rate of speed when it left the roadway, and the fire started almost immediately. 
The lawsuit points directly at the Cybertruck's door system. They argue that Tesla's door design relies entirely on electronic buttons to open, and when the 48-volt power system failed in the crash, those buttons became useless. Just like the other incident, there is a mechanical release, but in the back seat, it's hidden low inside the door panel beneath a rubber liner. If you're disoriented, injured, or choking on smoke, that release it might as well not even exist. What's even more disturbing, the medical report showed that one of the victim's blood had carboxyhemoglobin levels at nearly 50%. That would mean a significant exposure to carbon monoxide, meaning the kids likely survived the impact but couldn't escape the fire. And this seems to be the case far too often. As you know if you've been following the channel, this isn't the first time Tesla door systems have been called into question. The company had multiple incidents where vehicles lost power after crashes and occupants couldn't open doors. And now NISTA is already investigating whether the designs across Tesla's lineup pose a safety risk when the power is cut. In theory, these vehicles are supposed to be the safest on the road. Quite often, the 5-star crash test rating gets brought up in the comments, which is something I will address in a future video. But when design choices prioritize sleek looks or innovation over something as simple as being able to open the door when there's no power, we get tragedies like this. Both of these crashes, different vehicles, same company, point to one problem. What happens after the impact? These vehicles are packed with technology, sensors, and software updates, but none of that matters if you can't open the door when you need to. Until that changes, we're going to keep seeing more crashes that should have been survivable, but weren't.